Hello everyone, welcome back to Major Hi-Fi. I'm Luke. Today we're going to be looking at yet another headphone from Bear Dynamic. I just did a review on the DT900 Pro X. Now we have the DT700 Pro X. So the 900 Pro X was an open back headphone and this is kind of the closed back counterpart to it. And it is also supposed to be a studio headphone aimed at composers, producers, stuff like that. Though of course it's maybe a little bit more applicable for things like vocal recording and stuff that requires a closed back model. I'm going to talk about how this sounds on its own, how it compares to the 900. So yeah, let's go on ahead and open the box and take this out and all that good stuff. All right, so here are the headphones, and then I'll quickly show you what's in the rest of the box. No surprises, it's the same things that we get with the DT900 Pro X, which is this drawstring bag, and also two cables inside, one of which is 5.9 feet and one is 9.8 feet. They are both mini XLR cables with a 3.5 millimeter termination and both come with quarter inch adapters. So that's all that you get and it's all that you need really. Like I said with the DT900 Pro X, these are very similar looking to past Bear Dynamic models. If you came from watching the video on that uh, model, there'll definitely be some repeating in this video if you haven't already noticed. These look like any other Bear Dynamic headphone. If you've tried one on before, you know what you're getting already. We have these nice velour ear pads that are very, very fuzzy and nice. They have that blanket-like texture and it is expandable like basically every headphone is, but it goes nice and far down, which is what you want. And just like the other models from Bear Dynamic, these are definitely built to be kind of, you know, tossed in your bag and taken wherever you need to, taken to your session. You should definitely avoid trying to drop them or rough them up, but if you did, I think that they would easily survive a few dings and scratches. And just like the 900 Pro X, these are a circumoral headphone, except for, of course, these are a closed back as opposed to an open back. These are also part of the Pro X series, which is different from the Pro series. The Pro X series has the Stellar 45 transducer in it. This is a transducer that was developed and produced in Germany and they feature a three layer speaker diaphragm that uses an integrated dampening layer which is supposed to help this basically perform consistently across different devices. And then perhaps the most important upgrade is that these are supposed to be louder than the Pro series. The Pro series was a bit more amp dependent. It needed that kind of power boost in order to get the proper volume. These are not supposed to be. They're supposed to be plug and play and in my experience, they are plenty loud. You are not uh, in great need of an amp. You could use an amp with these. It definitely wouldn't hurt, but if you want to just plug them straight into your laptop or phone or whatever, it will definitely be fine. And these have a frequency response of 5 hertz to 40 kilohertz and an impedance of 48 ohms. So let's go on ahead and talk about how these sound. Hey guys, Luke here, just wanted to pop in and say that if you're enjoying this video, it would be great if you could subscribe and hit the bell to get notified when we make new content and hit the like button and leave us a comment if you have any suggestions or questions or anything like that. I would love to talk to you guys more. We would really love some help growing the channel and you know, just want to make sure that we're reaching our audience and whatnot. So yeah, any support is greatly appreciated and let's get back to the review. All right, so listening to these after having reviewed the 900 Pro X, I was a little bit like, uh-oh, because you know, a closed back is often way more impressive soundstage wise than a closed back. And I was like, is this just gonna kind of be like disappointing in comparison? I definitely had that experience with sort of uh, open and closed back models of similar headphones. And I was actually very surprised at how wide this sounds. It's not like this crazy contrast where it goes from out here to in here. It's still like, Pretty close, um, not of course as wide as the 900 Pro X, but it's not like this crazy, crazy thing where it's completely like, you know, almost feels mono for a second because of how different it is. Um, it actually does a really good job of keeping those outer edges of the stereo spectrum very forward and present. And it's just a well formatted, pretty simple, straightforward like imaging and sound stage. It's easy to learn, easy to navigate. It's a pretty simple equation to kind of figure out what your mix is being, you know, given to work with. And so you can get an accurate, uh, you know, depiction of your own imaging and stereo mix mixing on your composition and whatnot. All 
right, so in terms of low end, these are definitely a fair amount more heavy in the low end than the DT900 Pro X. In my video on that, I talked about wanting a little bit more sub presence. These definitely have it. If you're someone who feels like sub presence on a studio headphone is kind of a no-no, or like if a bassier studio headphone is something that turns you off, then maybe check out the 900 Pro X, which definitely still has a pretty beefy low end, but not quite like this one. It's not an absurdly heavy low end or sub presence, but it definitely has that kind of nice like punch in the chest occasionally, a pretty good like impactful feel to it. Definitely more of a cinematic feel, I would say. It definitely keeps that kind of center of the stereo spectrum a bit more grounded by that stronger low end sound. So they make it a more exciting listen to me. Do they sacrifice a little bit of accuracy? by making the sub presence and just the overall low end presence more intense, probably, but it's a pretty easy bias to kind of learn and work around, and I think it makes working on music a bit more fun sometimes if you get that kind of like big speaker feel. Some people will like disagree with me, but that's just my opinion. So the mids on these reminded me a lot of those on the 900 Pro X. I'm not sure if these are supposed to be tuned the same or not, I'm sure they're supposed to be tuned similarly because they sound pretty similar, uh, but I'm sure there's some differences, you know, just to optimize them for their different imaging styles and, you know, builds and whatnot. But the mids on these have that colored, kind of recognizable bare dynamic saturation to them. And they are pretty cleaned up, you know, the low mids are taken back a bit, but not so much so that they're sacrificing, like, a warm tonality. They still have that nice warm feel to them. The high mids have a bit of a bite, um, not so much that if you have sensitive ears it would be like, a, you know, stay away from these situation, but definitely do kind of give a bit more of a snappy kind of forward feel to them but you know yeah it's a studio headphone a reference headphone the mid-range is pretty just neutral unobtrusive kind of even steven for the most part um, and you know maybe a tad clinical in certain ways but i think that's a positive for a headphone like this For the high end, these once again do feel pretty similar to the 900 Pro X. They have a pretty bright sound, but that brightness is focused more in that 4 to 8 kilohertz range than it is in the sort of super thin, delicate, uh, super highs, you know, the 8 kilohertz plus area where things just get, um, you know, really, really kind of just like a thin layer of glossy, shiny brightness across. These have a bit more of a thicker high end response with a sort of rounded edge to it, and that saturation from the mid-range is kind of carried up into the high end. If you want a super thin, delicate, like light on its feet, like high end boost, these are probably not quite going for that. Once again, we're in the world of reference studio headphones, not everything's meant to be super duper pleasant, and you kind of want a bit of a brighter sound to keep you from overshooting the mark on your own mix. I think the high end could have been a little bit more neutral. I felt that way about a number of Bayer Dynamic headphones. I felt like the high end could have been a little bit more neutralized and less brightened up, uh, but it doesn't feel like uh, super like offensively bright. I just am like, okay, a few decibels wouldn't have been a problem, but, but I also tend to want a few decibels up or down or something something like that in every headphone I listen to, so, you know, take that with a grain of salt. And it is, once again, good that they don't overstate those super high frequencies and keep them relatively tame. All right, so overall, the DT700 Pro X to me are a great closed back headphone for the studio and whatnot. They do what they say they're supposed to do. And I think that they could be strong competition for other kind of well-renowned studio producer headphones out there right now. Like I said, with the 900 Pro X, I'm curious to see how people will feel these stack up to some other Bear Dynamic models, which of course have like long, you know, been hailed by many different uh, audiophiles and producers alike. And yeah, for $299, it feels to me like a pretty appropriate price. It's not the cheapest ever, but it's not so expensive that no one could get it. Um, and I think that for like investing in a pair of headphones to use for many years and to you know get a lot of use out of, these definitely are not a bad choice whatsoever. So yeah, uh, comment below what you have thought about past Bear Dynamic models, and maybe if you're interested in these, let me know if there's any questions I did not answer. I will link below also to my written article on this, along with my video on the DT900 Pro X, and I will also link to Major Hi-Fi's headphone ranking tool where you can compare these to any other Bear Dynamic headphones or headphones from any company, just any headphone you want to. So yeah, check that out. And I will be back soon with some more videos and reviews. And until next time, happy listening.